Hey guys, this time I actually remembered to unmute myself. My name is Tensor. Uh, I'm going to wait a little bit, wait for a hey few guys, people to get in here. I to unmute and speaking of which, I actually forgot to mute the stream itself. I'll wait for a few people to get in here before we get started. Looks like we've got quite a few coming in. Some familiar faces. Hey Neelish, James, and Mustafa. How are you guys doing? All right, hang on. Let me just refresh this, check to see how many of there you guys there are, and then we'll get it started. All right, looks like there's a decent amount. Right on up for life, I guess that's what your name is. I'm glad you could come. Neelish, thanks for coming again. Shingo, thanks for coming. And everyone else, thanks for coming. All right, so let's show you what we're going to be building today, and then we'll get started. So this is a game that uh, has been around for a few years, I'd say. This uh, kind of puzzle game here. They do have iOS and Android versions, but I find that building something like this can be an uh, interesting experience at the very least. So... When you start a new game, and I'll actually start a new game here, you can see we've got this 4x4 four four grid. And when we click New Game, we get a set of random tiles, uh, two to be exact, and they get placed randomly in the grid. And then us as the player, we're allowed to move these numbers either to the right, to the left, up, down, and so on and so forth. And when we move them, they slide all the way over. And then if two of the same tiles have the same number on them, for instance, these two, and I click down, it will merge them together and make a larger tile. And the object here is to get a tile that sums up to 2048, as the name uh, implies. So it's just a lot of merging tiles together, dealing with space, uh, moving around this 4x4 four four matrix and so that's what we're going to be building, something like this, except, uh, of course, this will be in our mobile uh, setting inside of Flutter, and we'll be using gestures rather than arrow keys to move this thing around. And it looks like I got a donation from Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. All right, so let's actually get into the code here. So I've got a pretty basic app here, you know, general thing, stateless widget, scaffold in there, or not scaffold, but material app, and then just the home page. We're just going to start by building out the logic and the uh, model first, and then we'll actually build out the user interface. So let's start with the model. Create a new file here, model.dart. And let me know if this is not big enough, if I need to zoom in or anything like that. You guys should be able to see though. So, all right, our board class is what we'll make here. The board will have a row and then a column. And actually, let's put these on separate lines. And I'll just spell our column like that. And then we'll also have a score in here. We want the row and the column to be in the constructor for the board itself, and then we'll add some functions that will be able to manipulate this board. <clears throat> Let's see, how do I want to do this? All right, we also want to have a tile class. The tile class is, you know, one of the tiles inside of the board. Uh, this will also have a row and column, and I can put these on a single line because they're not final. Then we'll have the the value of the tile, which by default will be zero. And in fact, 
Let me put that in the constructor. Um, and then we'll have two Booleans here. So one will be called can merge. Uh, as you saw with the game, you can only merge tiles if they are the same value with one another. So we need some kind of flag to tell us whether or not these two can merge with one another or not. And then the other one is uh, whether or not the tile is new. So is new is what we'll call it. And I'm going to put all these into the constructor. And we'll set the value to zero by default. And uh, the other two, everything else we can just leave alone. All right. Uh, we also want to add a few methods here. So an is empty method to check to see if this thing is uh, empty, AKA it's equal to zero like that. Mm. Uh, why is this throwing an error? I'm confused. I don't think that my Dart instance is working that well. Anyway, whatever. Um, we also want to override the hash code. So int get hash code. And we'll return value hash code. This way we can actually do some comparisons. Now I'll just remove this. Mm-hmm. All right, you know what? Yeah, I don't understand. <sighs> you know what? All right, we'll drop this. We'll make a function outside of this. I don't know why it's giving me issues, but yeah, that's really stupid. Oh, I am really silly. I completely forgot to put the semicolon here, and of course, everything after it was giving me an error. So yes, is empty is a class and this does work and so value equals zero. All right, so we have hash code. We also want to override the equals operator. So uh, let's see. I'll take in a, another tile, call it other and uh, not title, tile. And did I misspell override? Whoops. No, but I think, eh, whatever. And then we'll just return other um, and value where other dot value like that. And we want to check to see if other is a tile like that. Um, I don't know why it's not. Well, let's see. Okay. So it's complaining because I put the type annotation in here. All right. Well, whatever. We're off to a rocky start, but that's all right. All right. So we've got our tile class, we've got our board class. Um, in the board class, though, we do want to make a bunch of functions, though I'm not sure if I want to make them as methods or if I want to just have them be functions that we can call. I think I'm going to make some of them as methods and some of them as functions. Um, so first, uh, I think we want to start with a way to essentially generate random tiles. So we want to take our board and actually before that, let's create an initialization. And I actually completely forgot to put the board itself in here. So the actual tiles. So this is a list of a list of tile type. And um, 
we'll call this the uh, board tiles. And we'll set this equal to by default, and actually I'm gonna set it empty by default. Then we'll have a uh, function here which we'll call init board, and this will initialize this variable. So we'll say board tiles equals list dot generate. All right, and uh, we're gonna have a static length. So remember, the board was four by four. So we can specifically say, all right, we want this to be length of four. Then our generator, we're gonna take the, uh, I guess this would be the rows. And we'll use this to then call list.generate again. And again, the length will be four. Generator here will be the columns. And then uh, what we can do is just, uh, and actually, before I do that, let's make this a multi-line function. Or no, this should be all right. All right, never mind. All right, so, <clears throat> and then for each of the items inside of this row, we want to populate it with uh, tiles. And of course, we want to fill in the values of the tiles. So row will be R if it'll let me put that in there. Column will be C. Then uh, by default, our value will be zero. And uh, then we'll specifically specify that is new is false and then the uh, can merge. Uh, we'll just leave it as false too. There I have like an extra, yeah. No, apparently not. Hmm. Forgetting a parenthesis apparently. And that really looks ugly. Let me uh, try and make it a little bit better. All right, so this will generate a list, a four by four list, or a two dimensional list of tiles where all the tiles are zero. All of our rows and columns will be there and, and all of them will also be not new and uh, have the ability to merge. Uh, we also, in this function, let's uh, set up the score as well. We'll just set this to zero. Uh, and so we can just call this function when we start a new game. Now, we also need to create a get tile function. This is just a wrapper, essentially, around the tiles that are inside of our board. So we can just say, uh, return board tiles with the row in here and then the column in here. Um, and in fact, I kind of want to make this private so that this makes more sense. All right. <clears throat> so got getters, got the ability to initialize everything we need to be able to create the random tiles and then we need to be able to move our tiles around in response to what the user does. So, first let's start with the random numbers. So, uh, random empty tiles, what we'll call this. Uh, and uh, we're not gonna pass anything into here. We wanna create a list of tiles, and we wanna find out which of these are the empty tiles in our two-dimensional list. So we wanna find all of the tiles that, uh, and it's just tile. We wanna find all the tiles that have zero in them so that we can then place these random tiles inside of our list. Because if we put one over top of a tile that already has a value in it, then that just doesn't make sense and it'll break the game. And we can do this by going ahead and taking our board tiles and calling for each on them. This will then uh, allow us to get each of the rows. And let's just call them rows like this. And then we can iterate through the rows and we can just say rows, uh, we can call empty rather, add all, all rows, 
and then we can just use a where function to test to see if the uh, tile itself is empty by calling our do we have an is empty function yeah the is empty method here so we can go ahead and just say uh, where we have a tile and that tile is empty so that that will effectively iterate through each of the rows each of the columns and then find each of the tiles that are empty all right uh, we also want to see after we've done this we want to make sure that the empty list itself is whether or not it's empty because if it's empty and we just don't uh, we're not able to create anything in the board because obviously the board is just filled so just return from the function here and then we can use that uh, later to essentially cause the game over so then let's uh and do i want to put it here let's put the random generator let me get math in here first Jeez. all right so let's bring in math i'm going to show random because we need the random number generator and uh, you know what, I'll just put it here, it's fine. So let's create a random instance called RNG. And uh, we're gonna use this random number generator to essentially generate our random numbers inside of the, uh, inside of our two dimensional list. So I'm gonna say for int i equals zero. We need to iterate through this thing, so going to go from i to 4, from 0 to 4 rather, because that's the size of each of our uh, rows and columns. <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Oh, yes. We should probably check to see. Actually, no, we don't really need to do this. We're, we're not actually iterating through the two-dimensional array. We're, we're iterating through our empty array. And so uh, we want to save the index, or we want to create an index. I don't know why. Give that a type of index where we call RNG next int. We'll put in our empty uh, length here. So this will generate a number between zero and then the length of our empty cell list. And then we'll just say empty index number. And we're gonna call another function here, which will populate this. And actually, there's no point in making a function. I can just uh, call rng next int, put in something like, uh, hmm. we want like a roughly 90% uh, a 90% chance of putting a number in there. You know what, it, it's, it's all right. We'll just do 10. And if this is equal to zero, so one in 10, or one in, let's make it nine, then this will be a one in 10 chance. We'll put a four in there, otherwise we'll put a two in there. And this is not number, this is value, by the way. So that's the value of the tile that we're adding. And then uh, we need to, of course, uh, change the is new flag to true and then uh, we'll call empty remove at and we'll pass in the index to remove it from our empty list that way we have our empty list and then we have our you know our actual list of stuff all right let's see so that's that's that should be done that should be good to go Let's see. Yeah, I miss the semicolon. Not sure if Matthew is rich, but he is very generous, so. Even if it is one dollar, it does help. All right. At the very least, it's a symbolic gesture, in my opinion. It basically says, I like your content, so. Here, have a dollar. You can go and buy some candy or something, or maybe like a quarter of a beer. 
All right. <clears throat> so we've got our random function. Uh, let's create a function to define whether or not we have a game over. Or actually, let's not do that yet. Let's uh, start. Let's do our merge functions. So we want to see if we can merge our tiles together. So first, we'll create one called can merge, uh, and this will take in a tile A and then a tile B. And I guess we could tie this to our tile, our tile class. But frankly, I'm just going to put it in here because it'd be easier to do. So what we'll do is we'll just return. Uh, we'll check to see if A. Um, can merge is not true and B is empty because if, if there's zeros then it doesn't matter they can merge and really that doesn't matter to us a check to see if a is not empty then we'll check to see if again if a is not empty and if a equals b. So we'll take this and get back our boolean from it. And then that will allow us to decide whether or not we can merge everything. And we can come down here and make a merge function. So tile a, tile b again. And for this one, it'll be uh, void. We'll just say if can merge is uh, false rather than true. Uh, we want to check to see if A is empty and not empty rather. And if B can merge like that. And then uh, if B can merge is false, then we can just go ahead and change it to can merge equals true like this. And we can go ahead and return. That way, the next go around, we can merge it. Then down here, we want to check to see if B is empty again. Then we'll change the B value, set it equal to the A value. Then the A value will be zero now. And then else, we want to check to see if A and B are equal to one another. So in other words, if, if B is zero, then we're just moving the tile from one tile to the next. And so we're just essentially moving the number over and then reassigning it. So the tiles are not actually moving, but it'll look like they're moving. So because the numbers will be moving. <clears throat> but if we have two tiles that have the same value on them, then we want to, of course, increase the value of the tile that's being merged to. So we'll say b uh, value equals b value, and we could just multiply this by two, or we could just add them together. It really doesn't matter, because uh, yeah, they're all going to be perfectly fine in that regard. And then we, of course, want to take our uh, a value and set it equal to zero. And then uh, we'll set b can merged equal to true. Uh, can merge rather. And then uh, finally, we want to have another else statement here. Just say b uh, can merge, set that to true. All right. So that, that should handle our merging, or at least most of the actual internal merging logic. But we need to figure out whether or not we're merging from the left, the right, up or down to really get this to work. So let's uh, start with this. These are all going to be very similar functions. So let's start with uh, merge from the left. So merge left, pass in int row and int column. And we want to have a wall loop while column is greater than zero. We'll call our merge function and merge takes in the tiles. So we could just go to our board tiles, put in our row and then our column like this. And then uh, because we're merging from the left, we want to go uh, row and then column minus one like this. All right. And then uh, we want to decrement 
our column, and that should be row and column. That way we can actually iterate through all of them, see if we can merge them together. Then uh, let's copy this, call this one merge right. And with right, the only real difference here is that we're gonna be adding one to the column and then incrementing the column here. And of course that means that the wall here should be column less than our column, which is in the actual board itself, M1. So the column is less than four, or it should be three rather, because it's four minus one. Anyway, because we're working with lists, that makes more sense. Then uh, merging upwards is gonna be this, except with the row. So take the column, turn it into a row. Then we'll remove this part, put our minus one here, and then uh, turn this into a row, whoops. Call this merge up. And then uh, for merge down, it's just a repeat of the merge right, except with the row rather than the column. Now well, that's really ugly. All right, so this we want to check to see if row and perhaps we should change this to R for this specific function because we have a row in our board. We could use this dot row, but frankly that could get confusing. So I'm just going to put R in here uh, just for this specific method. So <clears throat> while R is less than row minus one, uh, we want to go R plus one rather than column plus one and then R plus plus like that. Alrighty. And I think that is it for our merge logic. Got merge up, down, left, right. All right. So now we need to uh, create functions that will allow us to figure out whether or not we can move a tile up, down, left, or right. So these will be based off of our merge function or rather our can merge function. So we can use that to determine whether or not the tiles can move up or down or left or right. And of course, because we're looking at each tile individually, we're going to have to do this incrementally with, with a lot of for loops. <clears throat> this may seem really computationally expensive, but it's not that bad actually. So anyway, so let's start with, uh, I guess, move left. So just say can move left. Then we can have some for loops. And we want to iterate through each of our rows and then each of our columns. And for each of them, we want to check to see if the tiles can merge. So we can call board tiles as in R C like this. And then for the other ones, we can say board tiles R and then C minus one like that. So we can check these two tiles, see if they can merge with one another. And then if they can, we return true. Otherwise, after all these for loops, we can just return false. <clears throat> I don't know why my analyzer is leaving weird colors here on the screen. It seems to be slowing down considerably, so I'm going to go ahead and restart it. Actually, ever since I updated Flutter yesterday, it's been like this. Maybe I should downgrade Flutter to uh, fix this. All 
Anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, we've got another uh, donation. Didn't realize that. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. So he gave me four pounds, which would probably be enough to buy a beer. So I'll use Matt's money and, uh, and Matthew's money to buy myself a beer. Uh, Rogue Hit says that I need to, uh, hopefully I didn't butcher your name, by the way. Need to refactor the local barrier road or in the method merge up. You think so? Let me take a look. Uh, merge up. No, I don't. Because, um, so what will happen is Dart will use the row that we're passing in here. Now, granted, I probably should, but it will automatically prioritize the row that's being passed into the function as an argument. So even if I was to leave it alone, it would be fine. But just for the sake of um, clarity, I'll refactor it for you. That way it makes more sense. But yeah, it shouldn't shouldn't use the row that's attached to the board up here. Instead, it would just use the argument. The only reason why I did it here is because we were calling on row as well. And we needed a way to differentiate between the two. Of course, like I said before, I could have just called this and that would have worked. But uh, yeah. Anyway, just not how I'm going to do it. So, all right, so this works for merge or move left. Let's uh, go ahead and do move right. So move right is just gonna be the same thing, except the main difference here is that we're gonna flip R to one and C to zero. And uh, let's see, and instead of C minus one, or uh, this is gonna be plus, and uh, I think I, I think I've got this backwards, actually. Yeah, I think this is backwards. One second. Let me think about it for a moment. Yeah, I think I think what I need to do is flip R and C rather than making this like that. Let me see. So yeah, I think this is, needs to be zero again. This needs to be one. And then it's just like that. I think that's fine. Should be all right. All right, so. And I think the rest of it should be fine as well. Then for up and down, it's a matter of flipping the others. So, all right. Um, yeah, all right. Uh, oh, yes, I am missing something. So for moving right, we're starting R at zero here. But we want to start the column at our column value minus two, which is just two. And then we want to decrement downward. So from C down to zero. And we'll use minus minus here for that. That way we go from uh, we go through each of the rows, but then we go through each tiles backwards. All right. Then let's uh, do can move up. So let's grab this. And actually, I'm going to grab can move left here because it's more similar to can move up. So with can move up, we want R to be one, C to be zero, and the rest of it's fine. Then down here, it's just R minus one rather than C minus one. 
and then the rest is fine. Then for uh, can move down, we're going to uh, do what we did with our columns here with the rows instead. So we want to start row at row minus two rather than uh, how we had it before, or r at row minus two rather. And then we want to say r less than or equal to zero minus minus r. And notice that I'm decrementing and incrementing before. So this is different than saying r plus plus or c plus plus. Anyway, there's a specific reason for that. Uh, also, instead of minus here, we want to have a plus. Let's see. That seems about right. All right. So now we can figure out whether or not our board can move up, down, left, or right. Let's actually make it so that we can move up, down, left, and right. And uh, for that, we need a few helper functions. So let's create a helper function that resets the can merged uh, Boolean for all of our tiles. So call it reset can merge. And for this, it's, it's just going to be uh, similar to what we did here, where we're just incrementing through our board tiles with the for each. So I'll just copy that. And then uh, I can use the rows and just say rows for each row, uh, tile rather in the row. And I can just say tile can merge equals false like that. Mm -hmm. That seems about right. Again, I don't know why everything is being really slow, but I guess we'll have to deal with that for now. Apparently we've got a lot of mats watching the live stream. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> Alrighty, so, um, all right. We're able to reset the merge status and this is gonna be important for, uh, after we've moved our lists or our rows downwards or upwards or left or right. We want to reset the merge status so that it goes back and it rechecks to see if it can merge. And so with that new function, we can now create our move functions. So let's start with uh, move, I guess, move left. So to move everything to the left, we're going to check to see if we can move left. So if, it, if we can't move left, then we'll return. We say for int r equals zero, r row plus plus r, then for int c equals zero, c column plus plus c again, and then we're just going to call merge left with r and c in it, and then down here. We can call random, uh, let's see. We wanna call our random function, which I don't remember what I called it. Uh, random empty tile, so that we have a new tile in here. Why are we all of a sudden getting these errors? Like, what's that about? Yeah, bool is a type. <laughs> Apparently boolean is not a type in Dart. All right. I'm going to I'm going to have to reset this cuz I'm going to reset my entire uh emulator or not my emulator my uh editor cuz this is really annoying. Uh so give me give me a second guys. I'm sorry about this.
All right, I think I think that may have fixed it. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, you guys didn't didn't really say anything since then, so it's not as though it was a big deal. I don't think. All right. So where were we? We were able to move left. We called empty tell, and then we want to reset the uh, the uh, status or reset can merge rather. So let's go and call that as well. So down here, call it like that, and just copy this and uh, use it to create move right so move right it's going to check can move right instead of can move left that should be capital and then uh let's see uh, for this we're going to go starting at column minus two and again we're going to go zero less than or equal to not like that. C less than or equal to zero. And then uh, decrement C. And we'll call merge right with this. And then we'll call our random empty tile and then reset merge. Let's see. Move up is going to be more similar to move left. So can move up like that. Let's see, ah, uh, this looks about right to me. And then we're just gonna call merge up. And then finally we wanna have move down. So move down is gonna be more similar to this. Except of course, rather than columns, we're gonna do the rows. And actually I can just come down here, grab these. So like that, and then the column should just be from zero to column, like this. Let's just call this move down, can move down. Let me make sure I called that, can move up, can move right. Okay, so I did change those. And then this should be merged down, R and C in it. Alrighty, so we're almost done with this logic here. And then once we're done with the logic, we can actually get into the user interface. Uh, really all we need to do, the only thing we have to do is just come to here and uh, we want to call our reset can merge function in here. And then we want to call random empty uh, tile twice in here. So that we generate two empty tiles when we create our game. All right. So and and that's really it. So that's it for uh, the logic side of things. Let's let's go ahead and jump into the user interface. And actually, before we do that, I'm going to create a utils.dart file, and I'm doing this mainly to create a color map because. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but let's let's jump over to the uh, to the browser to the game again. You can see that each of the different numbers of tiles has their own color. So, uh, for instance, this one is sort of like a deeper orange than the others, but they're all like oranges. We could, of course, have them be completely different colors if we wanted to. We can make them like uh, red or black or whatever. But as you can see, like 64 is an even deeper color so on and so forth. So we want to make a map that uh, allows us to swap colors uh, based on the tile value. So let's, uh, this will be a map of int color. We'll just call this uh, box colors. And uh, instead of box colors, I'm just going to call it tile colors. And these should be colors, I believe. I think I need to bring in flutter material. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so then um, we can just use the map literal to add various colors in here. So for two, we'll call colors.orange, put in uh, 50, 
then for four colors dot orange and uh, we'll put in 100 and just keep doing this why are we getting errors here shouldn't be it's not telling me what the error is let's see color can't be assigned to the value of colors okay let's change it to color then there we go and so let's just copy these so then next we have eight which will make uh, 200 I guess then we have 16 which will be 300 whoops did not mean to do that um, then we'll have uh, 32 which will make 400 then 64 will be 500 uh, let's see then uh, 128 will be 600 and yeah so on and so forth I don't really have to narrate each of these anymore I'm sure you guys get the point And we've actually got enough in here for most of them. And then finally, we can say 248 colors orange. Uh, do we have a thousand? Is that, is that such a thing? I don't think there is one, but let's use a uh, deep orange instead. There we go. So now we have the ability to like color all this stuff, which, which will look nice. Speaking of which, anybody have any questions or comments or anything like that? I'm going to go ahead and commit all this stuff while I'm waiting. So. Seems pretty common in my live streams that people tend to get pretty quiet about halfway through. And then they start to talk near the end and near the beginning more and more. I guess you guys are absorbed in my amazing coding skills, or maybe you're just dumbfounded by how I'm doing this. <laughs> According to... You didn't understand two bits, but you missed the start. It's fine, Matt. Um, this video, of course, will be on YouTube after the fact. I know it can be a little bit complicated. Programming games, I find, can be a little complicated, and I don't really like explaining the mathematics behind them. But I did really want to do a game today, so I resigned myself to do one. Um, well, it's just the... Uh, let me show you. Just for anybody who hasn't seen the beginning. So, all right, if we click new game here, we've got our 2-4, our 2048 game. So it's a tiled game, it's four by four grid. And when you have a new game, you have two tiles that appear randomly. You have the ability to move left, right, up and down. And when you make a move, a new tile will automatically be generated in one of the empty spots. The object of the game is to be able to merge tiles like this. You see that I had two twos next to one another. Then when I push to the right, all of them move to the right, and then they combine to become a four. And when I merge tiles like that, I can then create higher denominations. And the object is to make a tile that has a value of 2048. And then of course, uh, the failure state is just filling up the board. Let's see if I can do that real quick. Uh, Apparently I'm doing better than I thought I would. There we go. That So I, I couldn't make any more moves because I couldn't merge any more tiles and nothing could be uh, generated. So it gives me a game over. Does that help? So basically what we've done is we've already built the logic for like merging 
our tiles and for containing the state and stuff. And now we're working on the user interface. So currently working on the colors for each of the tiles. So as you saw, as the tiles gained in value, they sort of got darker and darker, a darker orange color. And so I've set up this map so that we can automatically change the color of our tiles. Alrighty, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and uh, come into our main .dart file and start to build out some of this. So, um, hmm. I'm thinking that we want to put the scaffold up into the My App widget, mainly because we need the scaffold, but I want to use this my homepage widget to essentially build out the the actual board itself so the board is going to take up most of the screen and uh it just makes sense to do it this way all right so my homepage will be our board and uh let's see Let's go ahead and uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and create another widget uh, that we're going to attach to it. And this will be a stateful widget, which we'll call the board widget. And I just said it'll be a stateful widget and it will. I'm just making it stateless because it's easier to do it this way. If it'll let me. I guess I have to do it with the mouse. All right, there we go. So it's actually a stateful or stateful widget, yes. Um, we'll take our board object. Let me import it. And let's import the utils as well while we're at it. And we'll take the board here. And we'll just say board, board. Then we want to have some uh, final values. The row, which would be four, uh, column. And actually, we can initialize these variables in the init state. So let me just remove these. And uh, let's make them not final. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, we also want. Not some booleans, so is moving and game over. Now we can use init state to populate these values. So our row before column before and uh, let's see is moving will be by default false and game over this should be private whatever game over will be false as well and then uh, we can go ahead and use our board uh, by saying uh, board equals board pass in the row and column I think that's how we had it set up yeah row and column so that will instantiate a new board and then we can go ahead and uh, and this is private of course and now we can go ahead and create a function that will initialize the new game so just call this new game so that we can reuse it multiple times we can call board in a board which will uh, empty the board out and we can say game game over equals false and uh, we can call set states like this uh, we could in fact let's just wrap this in set state and so we can just call the new game in here
Let's also, uh, because we're going to be calling set state, we could also, well, no, you know what? I'm going to start building out the user interface before I do that. Uh, all right, so in the build function, we want to do a few things before we actually build everything out. So I want to create a list of tiles. Uh, and the tile type, of course, is what we had. And we'll call this tile widgets. Um, and actually, let's actually create the widget for each of the tiles first. So <clears throat> we have our board and uh, we want to create a tile widget too. So class tile widget. And uh, make this into a stateful widget. All right, so for this, uh, of course, this is going to be each of the tiles that we have. And uh, we want to wrap our tile in here. So tile, and then we also want to have the, uh, let's see. I think we also want to directly reference our board widget state, but I'm not sure if that's such a good idea. You know what? Yes, we'll do that. So and we'll of course create the constructor. All right. So then, uh, for the state here, we uh, of course need some. Uh, the single ticker provider because this is going to have an animation on it. Uh, state makes in like that. And then let's create some animation controllers. So animation controller and then uh, an animation with a double in it, which we'll call our animation. And this way we can actually animate the collision of the tiles. I thought about animating the actual dragging, like tiles moving across the board. But really that's a much more complicated animation. Uh, it's something that maybe we could do in the future. I could do like a whole tutorial on it, but we're talking about like doubling the size of the code. <laughs> anyway. All right, so let's use init state. To initialize this, and create the animation controller. We'll have this animation be 200 milliseconds. Put the vsync on, so it's referencing this object. And then the animation will be a tween, which begins at 0, 0.0 and ends at 1.0. I think it's just end. And we'll call animate and pass in the controller. All right. Uh, while we're at it, let's make a dispose function. So we want to call controller dispose and uh, and in the dispose we can also turn the tile into is new, turn it into false. All right. <clears throat> so down here in build, we want to check to see if widget tile is new and we also want to check to see if widget tile is empty and uh, put a negation here so if it's new and empty then we'll use controller reset and uh, we'll call controller forward 
to anim call the animation. And then we'll call widget tile set is new equal to false like this. Uh, else we'll go controller animate to 1.0. So this will animate to the end. And then we'll return an animated cell. Uh, what's this widget that we need? Um, trying to think. It's animated. Uh, we may have to build our own. I think we're. I think we're gonna have to build our own. That's fine. This is going to get complicated just to have an animation, but you know what? I'm dead set on doing that. So let's, uh, I'm going to call this animated tile widget. And uh, the animated tile widget will, uh, let's see. It's going to take in the tile, which will be our widget dot tile. It'll take in the state, which will be our widget dot state. And then it will also take in the animation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's create a class for this. We're going to have to extend animated widget. All right. And uh, while we're doing this, let's bring in all the overrides that we need, which is just the build function. And then, uh, of course, we're going to need these uh, values. So we need the uh, final tile, tile, final, uh, what was our state? It's just the uh, board state widget state. And then the uh, constructor, of course. Uh, and yes, do it like this, and then we'll put the animation in line. And uh, of course, we want these to be named. And let's see, we're going to call super with uh, listenable. And that will be the animation. That way it goes back to our other widget so that it can listen to the animation as we change it in here. And uh, I guess we could add the key as well in here. Just for the walls, I guess. Um, yeah, like that. Alrighty, so now the build function is going to get pretty complicated. So final animation double, call this animation. Let's set this equal to our listenable. If I can spell. Set our animation value to animation.value. And size, uh, which will be our board size, equals state dot board size. This is a function that we need to create. And we'll say double width equals board size dot width, not widget. And then we'll subtract state dot column plus one. And then multiply this by state dots. Uh, yeah, we'll give some get some tile padding in here, um, and then divide that by state dot column again. And this should be width. So this way we have a consistent width, even though we can change the padding 
for each of our containers and or each of our tiles rather. Um, of course, these functions don't exist yet, but we'll make them here in a moment. So then what we can do is say if tile dot uh, value equals zero, then we'll just return a container. So just an empty container uh, and else we can then return and we want to return a uh, another widget which we're going to create which will be a stateless widget and this will just be the actual and actually you know what I don't want to create another widget we'll just put it in line here because why not uh, we'll return a position um, and then left will be uh, let's see Got to think about how I want to do this. All right, so left will be uh, tile that column times width plus state dot cell padding since we're going to have cell padding. And this should be tile padding. <clears throat> and uh, let's see, do I really want parentheses around all this? Yes, I do. Okay. Then uh, tile dot column plus one. And then we'll take all of this, add it to width. Why do I keep writing widget divided by two times? one minus the animation value so the idea here is that uh, the box itself is going to sort of like stretch outward we're going to have it like ripple outward and inward as the two boxes merge together so it's sort of that's that's what we're doing here so the whole thing is to manipulate the tile padding with the animation and just kind of make it ripple so that I don't know. Let's see. Does the uh, web version do the same thing? I think it does. Yeah. So here, let me show you guys what I'm trying to do here. So if I combine these two, you'll see uh, the resulting tile will kind of pop out and sort of like bounce like that. That's the animation that we're working on right now. So this is whole like bouncing animation. Anyway. <clears throat> So before I go get really into this, let me read some of your guys' questions. So, what switches does my keyboard have? I think they're red, or actually no, they're brown. Cherry MX Browns. Uh, the Morbid Hero says keep up the good work, Tensor. Can we have more videos regarding the ML kit and Flutter for videos live stream? Yes, absolutely. ML kit has been on my to-do list for like a year, but uh, I didn't do it way back when because uh, Flutter was still um, it was still in beta, and I didn't want to deal with the changing APIs back then. Oh yes, and of course, test-driven development is something that I do want to cover as well. Uh, I quite like the testing kit in Flutter, even though I don't use it in any of these videos. Mainly don't use it in the videos because I don't want to waste your guys' time. All right, so position, we have our left. Now we need our top. Top will be tile row times our width plus the state uh, cell padding again uh, times cell, and I need parentheses. Uh, tile row plus one plus width divided by two times one minus the animation value. You guys are lucky I didn't. Um, <laughs> I had an idea to do a block version of this, and let me tell you, that thing got complicated really fast. 
um, even more so than this thing. Um, let's see, hang on. Okay, so the position doesn't need the sized. Oh, what's going on? I don't need a flex column width. All right, so our position just needs top, our left and top. So inside of here, we'll have our container. And then the container is going to have a width and then a height. And actually, let's, I'm going to actually have to uh, calculate the size here before before I put in the width and the height because it's going to be the same value. Uh, color will just be color. And then the uh, border radius. And I'll also get the color here. Uh, for this, we'll just say border radius. Actually, you know what? I don't want a border radius. So let's remove that. And then inside of this, we'll have our child, which will be a center. And then inside of that, we'll have our text, which will be a child text. And then this will just be a tile dot uh, value. Uh, and of course, to string like that. All right, so now we need to calculate the sizes. We can do that pretty easily. Um, so, and let me, uh, oh, did not mean to do that. Let me take this and wrap it around our position here. And uh, yeah, then we'll calculate the size. So with the size, we're gonna want to, well, uh, yeah. All right, so it's just gonna be the width times the animation value. And I'm just gonna write it in here. And it'd be the same for the height. So of course, these are all squares, so it doesn't really matter. They need to be same size. Then for our color here, let's say box colors contains. And actually, uh, what did we call our map? Is it box colors? No, tile colors. Tile colors um, contains key. And we want to check to see if it contains the key of the tile.value. And if it does, then we'll just return the uh, tile colors uh, with the uh, tile value in it. And if it doesn't, then we'll just call um, colors dot, uh, let's see, I think there's accent orange. Or orange accent rather. I think that's what we we'll want. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that should be all right. So, orange accent should be. Eh, it's not. It's actually going to be darker than orange fifty. So uh, let's just put in orange fifty. All right. All right, so now we need to set up the cell padding and the tile padding, or they're the same thing. It's not cell padding. I don't know why I keep writing that. Um, and we need to create this box size or this board size of function. All right, so this is all in our state object, which is inside of this function up here, the board widget state. All right, so cell padding. will just be a double set this. Whoa, the hell just happened there. And it's tile padding. This should just be a double, uh, let's just say 5.0. And I'm just going to 
define it in line like that because it's really I don't care. And then uh, the other one that we needed was what? The board size. All right. All right, and we'll define the board size by using a function. Let me create that function. Keep getting this stupid phone call. Hang on. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing that. Anyway, there's all this uh, noise happening because my phone is vibrating on my table. All right, so we're going to pass back a size here. We just want to call a uh, query. Uh, what is it? Query uh, media query dot of context and uh, actually we're going to need to grab this media query from inside of the build function because we're passing in the context so put this in here and we'll create a new variable here called media query have this be yeah just a media query data we'll just call it uh, query data and uh, set this in here. Then we can use our query data in here. So let's see. Query data dot size. And then we'll have our width. This will equal size dot width minus uh, let's see no let's just leave it as size dot width and then uh, we'll return our size width keep typing in widget and in fact you know what I'm just going to remove this entire line just put this in here size width instead and yeah that'll, that'll just be easier all right so let's see all right so we've got our animation widget all set up it's in here We've got to mainly just finish off the board state. So let's do that. Um, let's see, where are we? All right, so in here, I don't like having so many stateful widgets, but you know what, it, it, it'll be all right. Let me put this above this because it's really confusing me. Um, all right, so. In our build function, we're going to need to get create a list of um, power widget. Let's call these our power widgets. Then I'm really not going to like doing this, where we're just going. Uh, you know what, I'm going to use the generate command instead because that will be better than just iterating like that. So let's start generate. I'm going to go four rows. Um, and this is essentially just generating all of the widgets for us. So each of them will be size four. And then uh, list.generate for, and then this will be our column. And then uh, we just want to return our new uh, 
list or what are they called tower widgets and our tower widgets take in the tile which will be uh, let's see what do we call our uh, state yeah board underscore board uh, we put in the row and then the column like this so that we can get the values and stuff and then the state we'll just put in this whoa that's really not cool I don't know why this kind of garbage is happening right now let me reset this editor something seriously is happening with these extensions And this is why I somewhat don't like VS Code. All right, so I don't know your name because it's all in Arabic, but the best way to learn Flutter is really just to start working with it, you know, and to, there are a lot of different people on YouTube like myself. They have tons of playlists. You can go look at their stuff. There's tons of different tutorials made by Google themselves that you can start with, or you can just sit down and start coding something. Frankly, that's probably the best way to do it. Alrighty, let's fix this thing. Um, I think it's just my Git lens extension is causing all these breaks. It's really annoying. I should probably turn it off next time. Anyway, uh, so where were we? We're generating these tile widgets, and uh, yes, so the tile inside of it is just the um, board. We'll call Git. We can have the get tile function we can use. Um, so I don't think we can just call it like that. So we need to call it on the instance. Board get tile, we'll pass in the row and the column. And then uh, for the uh, for the state, just pass in this. Because we want to pass in this actual state object. All right, so then uh, we have our query data, which we've already defined. Then uh, we need to create some another list of widgets, which will be our children. So list of widgets, uh, children. And then we can just say children dot add. Uh, we're going to pass in our, let's see. Gonna pass in how do I want to do this? <sighs> All right, uh, we're gonna pass in our my home page widget. I know this is kind of bizarre, but yeah, the my home page. And we'll pass in this. My home page is gonna also need to bring in the state from this board state. So let's add that here. Uh, final. Do it like this. I'll add the constructor. And then that should do it. Let's see. Um, oh, no wonder, because I spelled children wrong.
And I guess we we'll call that state like that. I don't know why it's not letting me pass in this. My homepage should. Oh, I did it to my app. Whoops. It's kind of silly. Uh, let me just take this, delete this. Put this here. I know this is kind of backwards, but whatever. Now that should work. Like that. And then now uh, we want to go uh, children dot add all, and then we're adding all of our uh, uh, tower widgets. So we're putting all these in here, and then let's see. And then we're going to return a column, and in here we'll have our children. We'll have a container. Um, don't really want any margin. Yeah, I'm going to sort of start to cut some corners here, but whatever. We'll have a row inside of this container. I'm going to set up the main axis alignment, have the children for the row. Uh, and then we'll have another container in here. And uh, let's set up a color. This will be like our background color. So colors.orange, use 100. And the child here will be uh, another container. And uh, let's set up the width and height. Uh, don't want these to be square. Let's do 60 dot 60. Let's make this 120. All right, so this container here will have our score inside of it. And then we'll have another container with a button to reset the game. That's the idea. So uh, inside of the container, and maybe it's better to make this a center. We'll have a column, another column. I know a lot of nested structures, but whatever. Uh, we'll use the main axis alignment to center this thing. This is gonna look like an abomination when I'm done. Uh, then we'll have a text here, which will just say uh, score, like this. And then after the text, we'll have another text We'll have our score inside of it. So we'll just call uh, board score to string like that. And we could add some text style, but frankly, I'm not going to waste my time. Uh, okay. So then we have closing of this. Da 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 da. Uh, in this one here, in this other column, we want to add the flat button to reset our uh, and actually let me boot this up so we can actually see it in the emulator see that's not going to work because we have errors but where are these errors oh forgot to put child here all right let's see what this looks like in the emulator that way we can kind of instead of uh, coding in the dark we can actually see what we're doing Apparently there are quite a few viewers here. How are you all doing? Well, I'm waiting for this thing to boot up. Anyone got any specific questions you want to ask? Or comments or feedback or anything like that? You'll have to excuse me if I'm not like explaining things well because I'm really tired. Been working like a beast all week. 
I almost quit my day job the other day because I got so angry with the workload. Yeah, you missed the game logic. Well, you can go back in the stream if you uh, just click the buttons. You can go all the way back. Uh, but yeah, we're about to get to a point where you'll see it in action. And then you can go and look at the code. I've actually got the code on the GitHub. If you want to take a look at the code, you can go to the description and go look through it. All right, so let's see. We're, we're getting an error here, which is fine. Uh, let me show you guys the emulator. Let me uh, first debug this error. Mm hmm. This error's not making much sense. Let's see. Yeah, it's not making much sense. It's telling me the error is happening at the run app command, which doesn't make sense. But I know it's happening down here because I haven't connected the two. Anyway, so let me uh, let me connect them. So inside of our my app state, let's create a position, and uh, we'll have a left of 0.0, .0 and then a top of 0.0. .0. And then we'll have a child with a container in here. And then the idea is that we eventually have a child with a stack in here. And then the stack will have the actual application inside of it. Let's see. Let's set everything. All right, so move this. I need the key here. Apparently, positions must be placed inside of stack widgets, even though they're inside of a stack widget. Anyway, whatever. Um, okay, let me just finish the rest of this logic then and get it going. So we need to define the size, which will be our board size, which is equal to state.board size, which we have that function that we created. Um, state is just like that. Then we have the uh, width, which will just be our board size.width minus uh, state.column plus one times state. Uh, cell padding and it's tile padding and then we'll take all of this part here divide it by uh, state column and then we'll have a list of what do we call that widget the uh well i guess we have to make that widget now i didn't want to make this widget but i guess we have to make it that's annoying all right it's not a problem i can just copy and paste do this so Calling this tile box. This is what we were uh, putting in here. This thing here. This whole piece here. The uh, that's that's what I'm basically. Uh, that's basically what this tile box is. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's just. Uh, all right, so the tile box will have a set of stuff. We'll have a final double left, final double top, 
final double size, final color, color. And then we'll have a final text, text. And then of course, let's put all that in the constructor here. Make this easier to read. All right, so then uh, we're grabbing this position piece, all of this, copying it, putting it in here. All these computations we need to move back up. So uh, put left here. Then what I'll do is, uh, all right, so all these are still here, that's fine. Um, this will be top. The child will still be a container, but we'll put the size into the width and the height. And then uh, box decoration, just want to replace the color here. And then uh, for the text, we'll just put the text in here. All right, so now let's do our computations so that we can use this. So I can just, uh, let's see. Well, I can just directly call this thing. All right, so we've got uh, set of position. We'll put the uh, tile box. Like that. Uh, we don't need the child. We do want the size, so let's put in size like this. Remove this part here, remove that, this. Um, and that, that should do it. All right, good, good. I think that's all right, let's see. We have left top size color, and we're missing text. So for text, I'm just going to say um, a tile value to string like that. Oh, of course. Should be a string rather than a text. Okay. Of course, our uh, emulator is still in disarray and I'm not showing it on the screen. That's all right. Don't worry about it. I'm doing that on purpose because it's just an error and I don't want to put it over the screen. Anyway. All right. So let's go back way to the top here. Back to our home page. And we want to now take these tile cells and create a list in here. And what do we call them? Tile box, that's it. And we'll call this thing the uh, back ground box. Um, so list of tile box like that um and i guess we'll generate them again we could use for loops for this in fact it's probably better for us to do that mm, yeah let's just use the for loops for uh int r equals zero r less than uh, state dot row plus plus r and then for int c equals zero, c less than state column, uh, plus plus c. Then we'll create our tile box and tile box. Uh, I'll just call this tile equals tile box. And we'll have a left, which will be c times width times state dot cell padding, uh, tile padding, 
times C plus one. And then you're basically gonna do the same thing for the top part, except it'll be the row instead of the, the C, so R, and then R here. Then the size is just the width, and the color is just gonna be colors.gray. Make it 300, and actually make it 400. Um, and then come down here and just say background box add our tile. Uh, and this is not private. All right, so then we want to, let's see, put this in our stack. So like that. All right, let's see if this shows all that on the emulator now. Should, in theory. So I'm still getting an error. Let's find out what that's from. From the board size call. Oh, it's because the state object apparently is null here. Yeah, it's because I haven't attached the uh, the board widget yet, so the state object is going to be null. So I want to take this board widget, and instead of my home page, I'm going to put it up here. So board widget like this. And then now I can reset it and this should now show up. Let me show you guys finally. Bring the terminal in here and there we go. We've got something happening here. Of course we don't have our board yet so uh, it's just a matter of uh, modifying and making it so that this looks nice and then basically wiring everything together now. All right, I'm getting exhausted right now, but it's all right. Okay, so before all that, let's create some functions. No, let's not do that. Instead, let's just start uh, filling out the rest of this. All right, so we wanna add our flat button. Um, it's just uh, for now I'm just going to put a container in here and then an on pressed which we'll just uh, it's going to call new game let's see if it shows up yet mm, I think I may have to put it in the row rather than the the uh, column. And in fact, that makes more sense. So the flat button should be here. All right. So now let's uh, give it some text and some character. So uh, width. Uh, let's just use the width and height that we have here. All right. Uh, and then we'll have a decoration. Uh, let's see, let's have a border all. And then we'll put the color in here and the color will be colors gray. So there we go, we've got the box here. And then uh, we can make the container have a color too. Colors, uh, let's give it the orange color that we have with the other thing, it's just orange 100, right? Mm, I don't know why that crashed everything. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess because box decoration has its own color, uh, so I guess we have to define the color there. Yeah, 
Okay, there we go. So just do orange like that, and then uh, child will be a text, and then we'll just uh, and actually let's make this a center and then a text, so that we have the proper layout. And the text will just say new game. And yes, okay, that shows up. All right, so good to go on that. So now outside of this, and then uh, right here, I want to make another container. Give this a height of like 40. Child in here will be an opacity. And the opacity will be based on whether or not we have a game over. So is game over? 0.0 or 0.0, .0. and we'll set up this uh, is game over variable here in a moment. Uh, let me just, well, yeah, okay. And then uh, child center, then we'll have a child text in it, put game over in it, and so yes, this will appear when we actually get a game over. And let's see, still in the same container, we want another container here. Set up the, well, no margin. We want the width. Width will be uh, query data dot size dot width. Then we'll have the height, which will be the same thing, the query data size width. So we want this thing to be a box. This is the actual game board. All right, so now let's create a gesture detector so that we can detect whether or not the user has uh, well, pushed vertical or horizontal. And then inside of this gesture detector, we'll have a stack and I'm just doing this so that we can actually see the board. And I'll put the uh, children in here, so the children list. And let's go ahead and reset everything and see if that shows up. All right, so we've got some errors here, mainly from the game over thing. Let's, uh, for now, let's put the opacity at 1.0. Got a failing assertion. See what that came from. All right, let's see. All right, so it's something to do with the stack, which is fine. Overlay, and there's nothing more. Here's my code. Uh, here's another piece, my code. All right, so it's pushing me back to the top. All right, whatever, I'll, I'll go back through this in a moment. All righty, so let's, uh, let's, um, hmm. let's double check all this stuff, so. Let me uh, take this off the screen so it's not in the way. The uh, colorful brackets, that's an extension called rainbow uh, brackets or rainbow parentheses, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so we have our tile widget. I feel like we're missing a widget, and frankly, I don't don't like that. Um, and maybe it's because I've got all these jumbled up. But yeah, it feels like we're missing a widget. Mm. 
Maybe we're not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, let's go back up to the top and find out what's going on with this. All right, so obviously it has something to do with these four loops. Let's see if we uh, do something with the background box. So maybe um, hmm. Tile, tile box, width, height, yeah, seems fine to me. Let's see. I think we're perhaps missing some field here. We have our width, and it's being calculated properly, it seems. Mm -hmm. Top left, right, size, color, and then we're adding it to the background. Wait, I think I have an idea of why this is failing. All right, let me check something real quick. All right, so the, the failure is not actually the box. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was. It's this children up here. So instead of generating the list, perhaps we need to uh, use these for loops, which I really don't want to do. But I guess that's what we have to do. Uh, maybe that'll be better. Maybe there's something about this generate that's just not working properly. Let's see. Get tile. I mean, that should work. The state being this, it should be fine. Tile widget. I mean, what would be throwing an assertion error? Very strange. Uh, all right. I guess I'm going to put in these for loops instead. So Remove the list generate and this list generate. Set the tile widgets equal to a list of tile widget like that. Just cut this out for now. Let's see if that fixes the assertion. There's still an assertion error, but it's, it's a different one. Let's put that on screen for you. So it has to do with the text widget, which is fine because there's no value in there. All right, so now we're just going to say for int r put this back in here and we'll go um, tile widgets dot add add the tile widget like this and we'll replace this with RNC and that should Resolve it uh, unless column is column, yes. And this is int. <laughs> I think my dart, uh, my dart thing is killing it again. Oh, there we go, it finally fixed itself. But uh, let's uh, reset. There we go, we've got tiles. Tiles are appearing. <laughs> well, I, that's a start.
but why are there tiles when it should be zeros? Anyway. That's interesting. Um, we'll have to debug that. All right, so I know what the error is. The error has to do with uh, how it's parsing items with zero inside of them. All right, and so apparently it's a text widget, so let's see. So I'm assuming it's this text widget here that's causing the issue. Title value to string. The value should be either, I mean, I don't, all right, let's just do it like this. We'll use string interpolation. Like that. May resolve the error. Probably won't. It's probably an error in the back end because, I mean, I shouldn't have this many twos flying around like that. And uh, let me restart my emulator because this is really annoying. So again, I'll be right back, guys. And actually, while I'm at, I'm going to feed my cat because he's getting antsy. So give me like five minutes. Alrighty, sorry about that guys. So a word of advice, if you ever are in this kind of situation where you're not sure when you're going to be done working, always take a break, go get some food, maybe like a piece of fruit, something like that. Get your mind off of it and then come back and you should be alright. All right, so I'm eating a banana. Sorry guys, if you can hear that. Probably sounds disgusting through this microphone. What I'm gonna do is come back here and I'm going to debug these pieces because I'm thinking that this is what's happening. Probably has to do with this list generate, even though this should be fine, for whatever reason, it's just not working. And in fact, we can find out by just printing out the board tile values. I mean, that should be a thing. And of course, the application exited. Let me, uh, I actually didn't restart this, so hang on. Yeah, potassium, you're absolutely correct. Potassium is the best. All right. All right. 
So let's just do uh, tiles and see if there are the tiles in here. And I think it's just tile, right? This should just be a list of tiles. Da 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 da. You know what? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, I'll just print it out like that, and uh, let's now run it. See what's going on. I may have to pull up Dart Pad, whatever. It's not a big deal. In fact, that's not a bad idea. Let me go ahead and grab a tile object. Put this in here. And then I'll see if this actually works in here. It looks like it's working. So, um, I apologize. I know you guys can't see what I'm looking at. I'm just running the code through Dartpad. It all seems to be fine to me, so I'm not sure what's happening with that then. It's very strange that it's generating so many tiles that have... Well, you know what I can do? I completely forgot about this. Just do some... Uh, make some points and just uh, reset it and then walk through this state. All right. So this should throw an error. And let's look at the debugger. All right. So in our board, we've got our four by four row and columns. board tiles let's see looks like they're all value zeros yeah value zero value zero so uh let's see where is this changing maybe when i call the random empty tile let's see value zero value two value zero 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 okay so thus far it's all right there is a value four let's see what it looks like on the screen so i don't see any value fours on the screen even though there should be one um here's a value zero Another two, so that's already a mistake. Value zero, value zero. Um, okay. So yeah, maybe it is with this function. Uh, yeah. So let's look at this and see what's going on that could be causing this. All right. I'll just uh, go through this. So random empty tile. We go through for each of our rows. We check to see if the row is empty. Da 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 da. da. Okay, it's all pretty sound. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> And we add all uh, after checking. Okay, tiles empty, whatever. All right. So then, if it's empty, we return. We create a random number generator. 
Then we iterate through one to four. And I guess we should uh, check to see if our empty is not empty, like that. And uh, so if we do encounter a tile, it will stop. Maybe that's what's going on. All right, so uh, let's see. Set the value. Set this to true. Remove it. Okay. And then, uh, all right, everything else looks fine. So let's take a look. Reset this thing. See if we have less tiles now. Uh, let me get rid of the point. Nope, we don't have less tiles, so it's making quite a few. Let me just remove one of these. Uh huh. So this is creating four tiles for each, which is it shouldn't be. So maybe that iteration, maybe we just remove the iteration entirely. So do it like this. And we have one tile consistently. All right, that works. And why why was I iterating? I don't understand why I thought that was a good idea. Um, oh, I know exactly why I was iterating. But whatever. All right. <clears throat> Let's just leave the iteration out. We don't need it. Uh, I'll call this twice to get the two tiles. And it should be all right. So, random empty tile and another random empty tile. Now our new game should make two of them. Now, the other problem here is obviously if we have zeros, we're not seeing what we want to see. All right, so if the tile value is zero, it gives us back a container, but apparently that container is just coming back and not showing in the box. And so we need to manipulate that and make it look like it should be showing in the box. So perhaps we need to add color to this container. I'm thinking. Let's see. Hmm. This is inside of what, which is this widget? This is the animated tile widget. I'm not sure if this even matters, frankly. I mean, the container, like if I make this colors like black, it shouldn't matter. Well, there we go. I mean, apparently that just blacks out the entire screen. That shouldn't matter. Let's see, let's walk through this. So, Final animation, double listenable, okay. Then we've got our animation value, okay. Board state, okay. Width, board state, da da da. This looks right. Then if the tile value is zero, we want to return a container. Otherwise, we want to return a tile box. That seems about right to me. Let's make this gray. Now let's make it transparent again, even though it shouldn't actually be transparent. Okay. Where else are we calling to this? All right, so we're calling to it up here, putting in the tile, putting in the state in the animation, and then we've got the two constructors. It's fine. What about tile box? I think we're using this too much, and that might be the problem. Mm, no. Mm hmm.
background box seems fine. We're gonna make this like gray 500. No. Okay, well, why don't we just finish the logic here and then we'll go back through everything. I don't know if you guys can still see the emulator. Yeah, I still have it on the screen. All right, so we're gonna go through all the logic. We'll start to add the game logic. We'll see if that works. If it works fine, then it's just a problem with the aesthetic and then we can debug it from there. <clears throat> so where's our gesture detector? All right, so here it is. We want to deal with moving up and down and left and right and all that stuff. So on vertical drag, Update is what we want. This is for up and down, and left and right. Get in a value detail. We'll check to see if detail dot delta distance equals zero. And uh, well, and is dragging, which is a variable. Let's make here in a moment. And then we'll just return. So this basically says, all right, if you're dragging up, <clears throat> then return uh, is dragging. We can set up. Actually, we already have a variable like this. Is moving. Ha ha. All right. And then we can go ahead and we can say, all right, uh, if it isn't, then we'll just say it is moving. So uh, if moving equals true, like that. And then we want to check to see if detail dot uh, delta direction greater than zero. I'm going to call move uh, up. What was it in our? Uh, board yeah let's just move up so board uh we want to call set state too board uh, i think it's underscore board move up let's see all right Reset this thing. Ah, it's not going to matter here because all the tiles are at the top. All right, so then uh, else set state board move down and then. Uh, we want to add on vertical drag end uh, is moving is false and on vertical drag cancel is moving is also false. And we can extend this, and I think on drag cancel, we don't have something passed through. On horizontal, we can extend this to horizontal update. Same deal with everything, uh, except instead of up and down, we're going left and right. Let me grab this logic here. D. Wow. D. All right, and uh, this one should be left. This one should be right. Mm -hmm. We should perhaps add a check game over function too.
what is it board what was our function um did we even make that function no we didn't that's funny <clears throat> okay well we'll add that after just uh finish all this here i want these two as well change these from vertical to horizontal Oops. All right, let's see. It's actually dragging around. The logic seems a little janky, like moving up is apparently moving down. Like I'm dragging up and that's dragging down. <laughs> so that's fine. It, I don't really care if it's just a minor mistake here, but uh, it's the the part that's not showing the actual tiles that I want to see. That's the problem. Uh, let me see. So apparently up and down are reversed. So that's just a matter of flipping these two. I think should be fine. Yeah, all right. So that's up and that's down. Right, left. Well, this is right. Sorry, I'm dyslexic. Right, left, up, down. All right, so that that part's all working. The game is working. It's just uh, the some of these should not be merging the way they were. I don't know if that's maybe that was just something I saw and it's not actually a problem. All right, now we actually have a filled in uh, game board. <laughs> uh, all right, so <clears throat> you know what I'm going to pull out is the widget tree here. So let me debug. Uh, flutter debugger that's not what I wanted um, what is it called again I'm trying to remember not the observer sorry forget what they call it and they changed it too maybe it's dart yeah dev tools that's it oh, man Ellie I appreciate that but I just got it open so we're at the uh, I'm looking at it right now um unfortunately i can't show you guys because of the way that uh it doesn't work inside of uh mozilla and the fact that ios or not ios but uh obs will not let me uh capture chrome so once i find the problem i will in fact go and show you Let's see. I wonder, oh, so part of it is that the score is not updating. And that is a problem, clearly. Score should be updating. Uh, not that I really care about the score. Then we've got another text. Or we've got our new game, of course. Score is always zero. Um, game over text. That might actually be what's happening. Huh. Ah, you know what? That's exactly what's going on. I know exactly what the problem is. It's the opacity. Let me remove this thing real quick. Let me see if that fixes everything. Well, now game over is there. Didn't fix anything. All right. So no, that's not what I thought it was. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, so let's see. I wish I could. I, you know what? I wish the wi widget tree showed was the name of the widget. And it actually does. Well, that's nice. All right, so we've got our material app. So my app, then material app, then the board widget. So my app, material app, board widget. Board widget is down here. And the issue is this second scaffold or a second stack which is inside of the uh, my home page widget let's see where that is my home page is inside of the board widget and the stack let's see if i can do something with the fit maybe that'll help uh, what is it stack fit Stack fit expand. There we go. There we go. That doesn't really solve my problem. It's now like really janky to play with. Um, stack fit cover, perhaps. What do we've got? Loose is the default. Loose is what's giving us this. Um, pass through, maybe? See, the thing is, we want loose. So, all right, forget fit. What if we go and we add some kind of background to the stack? All right, so we're in uh, my home page. And, uh, all right, so. Position container. All right. Let's see, what else do we have on the stack? Uh, aside from stack, I guess we could uh, deal with overflow. What is it? Uh, overflow visible. It still doesn't explain why we've got widgets, text widgets throwing errors. See. Maybe it has to do with the text direction. I don't know. We can make it right to left instead of left to right. That really doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Expanded widgets can help. I'm not sure if that will help in this case, though. Let me wrap this stack in as an expanded, though. No, that just made things worse. Uh, <laughs> no offense, of course. Let's remove the position entirely and see if that fixes anything. Thing is, so the positioned, the idea behind the positioned is it's supposed to, uh, what bugs me here is that we're not, are we still getting an error? Yeah, we are. Okay, good. So the error is this assertion here that apparently one of the texts does not have data inside of it. All right, so if that's the case, let's find all the text widgets. So we've got this one, maybe it's this, maybe it's the scoreboard. It's not actually giving us data. Uh, so let's use string interpolation. So put that in there. It is saying line 253, but I'm not seeing anything there that uh, has to do with a text widget. So 
there's this one here and this is just taking in the text which we're passing in like this I mean I guess I could pass this in as a text widget itself and just do this I doubt this is going to fix anything though Why did that work? I have no idea. I have no earthly idea why that just fixed it and uh, why there's this gray square over here. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. If that's, that's what uh, made this game work, then it made it work. All right, so. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna have to report that to uh, to uh, the uh, Flutter guys because that's a very strange error. I've never seen anything quite like that. All right, um, let's put the position back. And what was it? Uh, left zero point zero and top zero point zero. All right. And wow, that was very strange. Now everything's gone, which is very odd. <clears> hmm. <throat> All right, so with our container, state board size width um, it should be under case state and then height state board size width. And it's not private. There we go. Let's see. Give it some decoration. That looks a little better, still a little janky looking, but you know, the game works, uh, even though the score is not incrementing at all. Which is very strange. Uh, yeah. I guess we could see what's going on with the score. Frankly, I don't really care about the score. Thanks for the fist bump, by the way. Um, okay. Yeah, no, that, that was the strangest behavior I've ever seen. It's the fact that just passing text somehow was destroying the text widget. And yet when I passed the text widget itself, it worked perfectly fine. I do not know what just happened there. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that is very odd. Uh, let's get some border radius in here. Uh, let's say 6.0. Do kind of want to make this a little snugger. I don't know what that white box is. Uh, well, I do know what it is. It's this. Um, let's just leave the color out. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Alrighty, so I guess really if we wanted to clear this up, just add some padding, add some scoring, or fix the scoring rather, uh, fix the opacity on the game over, because obviously it's saying game over all the time, that's not correct. Uh, frankly though, I'm not going to do any of these things, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I might fix the score, 
In fact, I am going to fix this score just because that is, yeah. So we don't have anything that's actually incrementing the score here, and that's why we have a problem. So let's uh, just need to find that and fix it. All right, so uh, let's see. It's going to be inside of the merge function here. Um, so if we combined two of them, we want to just say score equals, and it should be plus equals b dot value. So we just add b dot value to the score. So when we merge something so like that, I just merged two fours and they gave me four, and then I guess I merged another two fours. And so they gave me 16. And so the score just increments based on the size of the tile that you're combining together. That's all it is. So it's a very simple scoring system. Luckily, it's not a big deal. Now, uh, we do need to implement the game over functionality though. So it's just an is game over function. And it, it literally just checks to see whether or not we can move right or left. So um, just call it game over. And uh, yeah, it returns a Boolean, not a void. We can really just check to see if we can move at all. Let's see. How do I want to do this? Alright, so return uh, can move left and can move right and can move up. And of course, we're negating all these, so if all these come back as false, then we've lost. Alright. So now in main, we can go ahead and add the game over functionality. So let's just add a little function that just wraps this. So void game over, just set states. Uh, and then we just call board dot game over. And uh, yeah, we just set our game over into that. So game over equals board game over. And uh, or you know what? It'd be easier if we just said uh, if board game over. is game over equals true like that. And I think it's just what, game over? What's the, yeah, it's just game over and it's not private. Why are we getting an error? It's already defined. Let's make this game over with underscore because why not? All right, so now opacity is just, uh, let's see. Uh, we're just saying if game over, and I think we just want to point zero. Just use a ternary operator like this. Uh, it should not be void. I don't know why it's void. It should be bool. And uh, and actually, no. We'll keep this void, and then we'll just use our game over variable. Uh, the other thing that we want to do is call game over at the end of every single move. So every single time we move our function or move our board, we want to call game over just so that we can check to see if the game is over. And really what we probably want to do is make functions for each of these moves, but I'm being lazy, so whatever. And so now if we fill this up with tiles and we can't move anymore, 
can't merge anything, can't, you know, it should show us game over. I mean, obviously the game over is showing right now, but let's see, that should go away. Uh, apparently I've got the uh, opacity inverted. This should be 1.0 and this should be 0, 0.0. There we go. So now game over is gone. And uh, if we can't move, that will pop up at the top of the screen. Actually, I'd rather have it pop up in the middle of the screen, but whatever, it's not a big deal. It's funny, I can't get a game over if I want to. All right, uh, no, that's not a game over. Come on, give me a game over. Um, there we go. Finally, a game over. We lose. Yay. I've never been so happy to lose at a puzzle game. All right, well, I guess that's it. Um, we've got our score. We've got our new game, our game over, everything else. Uh, it's just a matter of fixing aesthetics, and frankly, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, what I'll probably do is after I post this, put this onto GitHub, I will go in and I'll add some margins and stuff, probably tomorrow or something, to make it look a bit nicer. But, I mean, you guys should, if you watch the video, you should have an idea about uh you know how this thing works and uh all that stuff you know it, the aesthetics really are secondary to the mechanics of the game in my opinion sha what is it shahi sa shahi sahir sahiro <laughs> It sounds like a Japanese name. Uh, Sak Sakiro. Uh, yeah, I'm not really sure when uh, I'm going to be live next. Uh, but I was thinking maybe tomorrow night, but we'll see if that actually happens. Um, I kind of wanted to do the three nights in a row, but like I said, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it is a Saturday after all. Uh, and when I do find out, I will post as quickly as possible. Unlike today, where it was just kind of like I ambushed you guys. Uh, I'll try to be more punctual, more, uh, you know, I'll, I'll post something that's like, hey, yeah, this will happen. And um, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing Flutter, if we're going to be doing Rust or whatever. I'll put up a poll tonight again, like I did last night. Let you guys vote. I'll put all the languages in there this time. So you got Rust, Flutter, Elixir, Go whatever you know uh if i was a betting man i'd bet that it'd probably be another flutter tutorial though there are a lot of guidelines on how to write clean and proper oop uh it's huh i don't really have a preferred resource to give you I mean, you can just Google clean OOP and you'll find a lot of resources that talk about what's a no-no, what's a good thing to do, and, uh, you know. Frankly, I'm more of a functional programmer than an object-oriented one, uh, even though that's really not that evident from, like, the example that we just did. Uh, reason ML would be fun, too, and so would Rust. Uh, the, the problem is, the reason why I've been staying away from ReasonML recently is because the syntax is like changed four times, first of all. And then second of all, like it, it's still like it's still in heavy development. Like if I put out a video, it's going to be completely deprecated in like a week. Like Facebook's really trying to sell their product and they just don't know how. Anyway. Reverie UI. Uh, I can't really do a tutorial on something I've never used before. I 
I am looking at the GitHub repo right now. It does look pretty interesting. So it's something I definitely will want to do at some time in the future. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's it for today. Um, sorry if this got a little meandering. Uh, and I really didn't want to go on as long as we did. Two and a half hours, Jesus. That's a new record for me. Uh, frankly, I am beat. But yeah, thanks for sticking in there with me. Like, you guys really didn't have to. Uh, yeah, and uh, like I said, probably going to try and do it tomorrow. And then uh, once I have more time, I'm going to start doing normal tutorials more and more and more to try and really... Uh, get back to the basics, but I'm going to continue to do the live streaming thing and uh, start to introduce the live courses and stuff because that's still a thing that I really want to do. I just haven't had much time recently. I've got a bunch of tutorials on how to do auth and uh, JWTs. Anyway, guys, uh, I'll talk to you guys later, tomorrow rather, or, you know, the next time I stream. Hopefully tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway, thank you, and have a good night.